Did school let out early today? Get out of here, kid. Leave the adult <sighs> stuff to the adults. <sighs> That's exactly why I'm here. To take care of the adults. <sighs> you got a smart <laughs> yeah, right. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate you trying to help me out, little boy, but I think those guys might have you outmatched. And I doubt your mom would want you to get hurt. But you don't un- You leave this for the big kids. I'm older and I've got much more experience than you. Now pick up any toys you left behind and go home. No! Why on, you? let's go. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, my name is Joe, also known as JC Productions on YouTube. Today I got an amazing and wonderfully talented guest. What is your name, miss? I am Elise Bowman, and I am so excited to be here. Welcome. Elise, I got a couple of questions for you, if you don't mind. Okay, I've got answers, maybe. <laughs> yeah, fire away. Okay. So, uh, what are you doing during these times of quarantine? I am home a lot. I am home a lot, but I am doing interviews very much like you. I think I shared with you earlier that I had two interviews set up for my own YouTube channel, Anime Adventures, where I interview my fellow anime voice actors. I am also doing a lot of voice work from home because I have my own studio set up kind of to my right. I've, we've got what we call our junk room, but it's set up as my voiceover studio and now my video studio. And so I've been doing voice work from home. I've been hanging out with family. I've been, you know, staying in touch with friends as much as I can and family, of course. So kind of a little bit of everything. We have health issues in our family, so we don't, we're trying to play it very safe. And so we actually don't, we do work from home. We don't go out a lot. So that's it kind of in a nutshell. Well, staying safe and be with the family. Best things right there. Mm -hmm. Family first. Okay, yes, absolutely. Yeah. Yes. What made you want to become a voice actress and who was your biggest inspiration for Ooh. voice acting? Well, so I started doing on-camera work as an actor. Okay. And so I was actually doing on-camera work and was interested in voiceover. And I first approached my vo my agent who handled voiceover and on-camera and said, I want to be a voice actor. And she was like, okay, well, here's your to-do list. Start working through those things, which included things like take voiceover classes, mm -hmm. get a demo prepped, you know, ha I, and I like to-do lists because I like that feeling of checking things mm -hmm. off. And in the meantime, I was also doing improv. I was taking classes and had made it to the level of performing with the troupe. And by the way, I'd always, I didn't know much about anime. I'd always loved animation. And so I was having dinner one night and I was with my, some of my troop members at my improv troop members. And then there was an improv troop, a couple of members from a different troop. We were all having dinner together. And one of those troop members was Mike McFarland. And if you're familiar with the Dragon Ball world at all, then you know, he's master Roshi. He's directed Dragon. Well, he's so many characters, mm -hmm. but that's one of the ones he's best known for. And of course he's a director in the Dragon Ball world and director on, gosh, Attack on Titans on, on so many things, directing One Piece right now. So anyway, he was at the dinner and I heard my fellow improv people talking about voicing characters in anime and I was like, what? I, mm -hmm. I love animation. Tell me about anime and how can I audition for this? So Mike actually told me how to audition and set me up for the audition at Funimation. Well, the character I auditioned for was Pan on Dragon Ball GT. And that's really, I, I, that's how I got interested. That's how I learned about anime. That's how I first got started in voiceover. And of course, then I went to my agent and I said, uh, guess what? I booked Pan. And, you know, I set up sessions mm -hmm. from then on out through her. And kind of the rest is history, I, I guess, because I started doing voiceover after that. Wow. Yeah. Your timeline. Hey, well, <laughs> any actors or actresses you look up to? Is there anybody you look up Gosh, to? A, a ton. I mean, oh, that, that's a hard question. I'd say there's so many. I don't even know if I can narrow it down because I've got actors and actresses I look up to 
in the anime and animation world. And then I love comedy. So I love comedic actors and actresses. Oh, that's way too hard. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm just going to generalize there and oh. go, yes, there are so many. What was your favorite role that you portrayed? And if you don't mind, can you please do the voice? Sure. I would love to do the voice. Well, you know, I have to say pan. And I think it's because, you know, it's also sentimental because it was my first role and it's what launched me into my voiceover career because from there I started doing other roles as well. And I've been able to do anime, animation, video games, commercial work, corporate work, you know, other aspects of voiceover. And then I liked her character too. She's spunky. She, you know, fought for her family. She's adventurous. And um, so the, so her voice <laughs> is, hi, I'm Pan. Um, Grandpa, he, yeah, yeah, yeah. Come in. <laughs> it went a little gravelly, but it's funny. I, I have a story with that. When I actually got the audition, I got sick and not like contagious sick. I've told this story before and I should have, oh, now I, I got to get water after. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but um, I've told this story before and I should have said my disclaimer of not contagious sick. You and I were talking earlier and I have asthma, so several times a year I will get, um, I will have asthma and it'll affect my voice. And so when I went into audition for Pan, I was a little more gravelly than usual. So I probably had a, a rasp or something except tire. So probably like, Grandpa, I don't know. I can't even do the rasp. So I booked Pan and went in for a couple of sessions and didn't have the rasp because the time by the time I booked it or booked her, and started recording, the rasp was gone, and then I was just like, cheeseburgers, fries, and blueberry pies. So she was just a little higher and not not raspy, not gra gravelly at all. So for the first couple of sessions, I was like, um, I'm gonna get fired. <laughs> so I kept wondering if I was gonna keep my job. And eventually I was like, okay, I think they're going to keep me. And so then, you know, 65 episodes later and a movie. And then since then, I've done been able to do video games over the years. I, I kept, kept to my job for GT. Mm. <laughs> wow. Okay. Now, if you can't choose your favorite, who's your, what's your favorite anime adventures video? Or you can do your top three. Ooh. Now, you know I can't pick favorites. You can do three if you want to pick three. With... Oh. Voice actors. Ooh, that was a good one. I think, well, it's all, so I love going to conventions. This is something new to me because I just, you know, so many actors have been going for years and years and I just first somehow didn't get the memo and just started going in 2018 love that I can go to conventions but what is also really cool is when I can go to studios and see kind of get a behind the scenes tour that I might not necessarily get if I'm just going in to record so you know I was able to interview Marissa Linty at Sound Cadence Studios and then I was able to go to interview Joel McDonald at Gearbox and kind of get a look behind the scenes there. So I do think it's cool to go to studios. And of course, I, I have gone a couple of times to Rick Robertson's studio where I work there on a weekly basis with him. So I, you know, I've seen his whole studio, but it's still neat. Like I'm releasing a video this week with him where he talks about the audition process from beginning to end to kind of give viewers insight into what it's actually like to audition for a video game or anime. So I think when I, you know, every actor has been amazing and so forthcoming in sharing their stories that I couldn't pick a favorite for the interview. So I think it's more the experiences of going to conventions, going to cities I haven't been to, going to recording studios and getting to see behind the scenes and then share that with people who watch anime adventures. Oh, I like that. I like all the videos you've made. I like them. Oh, They're all good. Thank you. Thank you. Well, it's so much fun. I've, I've absolutely loved the journey. Oh. Well, I'll be sure to also link your uh, anime adventures. 
for you. So. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it. No problem. Okay. Uh, now, uh, if you could play any role in a movie or TV show, what role would you love to play? But obviously, you didn't. Maybe you could. Uh, oh, you cut out a little bit. I heard. What role would I have loved to do, and what was the other part? But obviously, you didn't. But you wish you could have. So. Oh, I wish I could have. Hmm. Well, if it were animation, I think any Disney princess. Like, I would okay, love I to that. do a Disney princess. I, yeah, I think that would be cool to do some type of Disney or Disney Pixar movie. For, I feel like I should, for on camera, I feel like I should pick some deep, like, brooding character. But like I said, I like comedy, so I, I love some of the comedic roles for Reese Witherspoon and, and Jennifer Garner. So I, I would probably go with some comedic type role. Yeah, I like that one Jennifer Garner movie, actually, that one of Mark Ruffalo and her. Do you remember that one? Oh, her. oh, was that, um, thir was that 13? I think, yeah, I think that's what it's like. She like goes back, like her <laughs> goes fa flashes forward, and yeah. yes, uh, and she yeah, and she's like older, but then she feels feels like she's thirteen. That yeah, would be I like that one. So I kind of like silly. <laughs> okay, now uh, over the years of your career, do you still keep in touch with your co-stars and directors? I do. You know a lot. The good news. So I've worked in L.A. and worked in Dallas. But most of my career has been in Dallas. So the good news is a, a lot of people, it's somewhat of a small world. And so a lot of people you still see at auditions or jobs or you, you know, you're on set with them or see them kind of in and out at a recording studio. So that is pretty cool. And then, of course, with Facebook, Instagram and Twitter, we can communicate. And then there are certain others that I do stay in touch with and have lunch with. All, all the time or so it just there are varying degrees but you know for things like especially a film set you are together one of my best experiences was I Am Gabriel which is a film that I did okay. and we were on set for three weeks straight and you feel like it's it's this environment of all working together and creating something in a short period of time. And it was so hot because <laughs> it was in Texas and it was during the summer. Um, so it's, it truly is blood, sweat, sweat and tears. So a lot of us really do stay together and we're trying to get together fairly frequently. Um, so yeah, I do enjoy staying in touch with people I've worked with because you do have a unique bond. I feel like it's like summer camp. If you've ever done <laughs> summer camp. Yeah. Uh, I feel like it's that kind of camaraderie. So I love to stay in people in touch with people I've worked with. Social media really comes in handy though, like like when you uh, like talk with them and yeah. It does. Yeah. It really does come in handy. And then some people you may not talk to for a year, but if you felt like you had a tight relationship, it may be a, a year and you still you pick up where you left off and it doesn't seem like time has passed. All right. And then since you mentioned like conventions, you should come to Chicago. That'd be cool. Oh, I would love to. I love Chicago. That would be so cool to go to a convention in Chicago. That'd be awesome. Make that happen. Use your okay. powers. Okay, I'll be like, get Elise Bowen. <laughs> get Elise Bowen there. <laughs> that'd be cool. That'd be honestly that'd be cool. That'd be awesome. Okay. Uh, who's the coolest person you've worked with? Speaking of cool. <laughs> That's another tough one. Um, gosh. The tough questions, girl. <laughs> yeah, all the tough questions. Can I pass? Because <laughs> I've worked with so many cool people. Come back. We'll come back to that. Okay. We'll come back I to that. Ponder that or skip it. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, what director taught you the most? And is there a director you would like, love to work with? Ooh, I've learned so much from every director I've worked with because when I'm on set, I try to, I like to ask questions. <laughs> so whether that's from the director or the sound guy or the lighting guy, I always like to ask questions so I understand every part of what's going on, whether it's a voiceover job or an on-camera job. Um, 
So, you know, Chris Bevins was my first direct, well, Barry, it, he, he, Chris Bevins probably started a couple episodes in, but he directed me for most of GT. So, you know, starting with him in my first anime role was very insightful and eye-opening, and he walked me through the process. I had a director actually with a group that I was in in L.A. Um, who taught me a lot about comedy, Bob Lee, and just about comedic timing. And that was just actually a group we did videos for our church. And who there was one other. I Because I will say I cheated and I watched some videos, so I knew some of these questions. Um, like Mike Norris for... I am Gabriel. I had a lot of emotional scenes in that, and he just gave me time to get into those emotional scenes, which was nice to have that time to to work up to the emotion. I mean, I could go on and on about the directors in, in different aspects, you know, different arenas of the entertainment industry I've learned from, who I would like to work with. Anybody. I, I just love working. I think, you know, I majored in accounting and mm -hmm. never expected to be doing this. And I absolutely love it. So whether I book a commercial or a voiceover job or a film or I do a lot of teleprompter type stuff. Well, not right now. during COVID, but um, I just love all of the work. So I would I just love working. Thanks. Yeah, actually, that's what I want to do as a career. I'll become like a director. Or you do? Film. Yeah, that's what I want to do. I want to become... Film directing? Is that what you said? That's, that's well, what I want to do. Gosh, you're already doing so much at a very young age. So I think whatever you set your mind to, you will get yeah. done. Like if, if you were a voice actress, what would your career be? And what other interests and hobbies do you besides voice acting? Oh, if I did something besides voice acting? Like if you never like went in the field of voice acting. If you never Well, I did major in accounting, so had I not pursued acting, I might still be doing that. But I'd say a couple of things. Like what I want to do in addition is go into kind of motivational speaking and coaching where I help people because I'm a nerd when it comes to goal setting and writing down action steps and and making plans i have i've read so much on that topic but if i did nothing at all related to speaking or acting i love to organize and Same. so do you too yeah oh really <laughs> we have a lot in common. Mm -hmm. so i would do that i would want to be a professional organizer and home decorator i love that type of stuff Oh, you look like a doctor. Excuse me, a doctor. You see me as a doctor? Yeah. Really? Yeah. I can see it. Doctor. I, 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 could, I don't know if that would be my passion. I love that people have that as their calling. Mm -hmm. I don't know that that was my call. I started off in, as a major, and like my major was psychology. Mm -hmm. So I could easily have gone that route, like gotten my doctorate in that. Wow. But. But I changed quickly to accounting for whatever reason. Uh, yeah, yeah, like how you mentioned motivational speaking. I actually, believe it or not, still be posted. Had a motivational speaker on the podcast. Oh, on podcasts? On the, yeah, uh, like, uh, you know, like, not even post. I have a motivational speaker I had on as a guest on my podcast. I still, still post it. I had this one guy. Oh, I'll totally have to check it out. Sorry, you cut out just a oh, little sorry. bit. But I think I sorry. heard, yeah, you had a motivational speaker on. I would love to hear him or her. Yeah, his name's, I don't know if you know, Eddie Slowinski. You know, mm -mm. he's like, his like goal, I forgot like what his main goal was, but he's like very you know, positive energy. I mean, very, Ooh, uh, I can't wait to hear him then or see him. You. Yeah, that'd be awesome. When I post it, I got you. <laughs> oh, very cool. Okay. Yeah, uh, I love that kind of stuff. Yeah. Okay. Uh, favorite band and type of music? Oh, okay. So I knew you were going to ask this too. And by the way, you and I talked, and they just decided to start mowing outside of our house. 
It's like every actor's nightmare, too, because my home studio, which is to the right of me, mm -hmm. is very soundproofed, except when they start like mowing the yard or a plane comes overhead. And so, so if you happen to hear that, that's what that is. But so I, when it comes to music, I have very eclectic tastes, but I, it's weird, have a great memory when it comes to such random things, except the names of musicians. And so I was even looking at my list. My husband created a playlist. It's, I feel like it's like the, mixtape of the whatever year they did that but mm -hmm. so I like like one of my favorite songs my happy song is hallelujah I think uh, John Cole sings that mm -hmm. I love somewhere over the rainbow by Israel and I forgot his last name I love Jason Mraz the Avett brothers and then there are so many songs I'm all over the place but I can't remember <laughs> names and it's funny because I mentioned earlier that I I work with Rick Robertson he's voice of Deborah on Dragon Ball Z and Yomi on Yu Yu Hakusho and some other great characters and um, we we've worked together since 2015 we do commercial spots together <laughs> he will there are times where he does trivia and he'll say oh you remember the singer so-and-so like no oh they sang this song oh yeah I remember the songs I don't remember the mm. names so that's a long way of saying there's so much music I like but if you ask me the names of the band I usually forget mm. it's terrible so you so, know the names of the songs huh you yeah. know the names of the songs <laughs> yeah but I have a great playlist that I listen to all the time like last night when I was getting ready for my day today mm. Mm. well <laughs> I actually, uh, you know, Queen, like we are champions. We are. That's my favorite band. That's your favorite. I did hear you say that. That that's one. They have amazing stuff. Yeah. Like You're them. a big Queen fan, aren't you? Yeah. Because actually, I met Brian, the guitarist, and Roger, the drummer. Yeah. Actually, yeah. they were very cool. When I met them. Oh, you met them? Yeah. What? How'd you meet them? Okay, so they had a concert in 2017. Yeah. We had stage yeah. passes. And Brian comes up to me, puts his arm on my shoulder, says, Hi. And then it's like, you know, British accent, like, Hi, mate. And I was like, Holy smoke. <laughs> like, you know, I feel like, like, you know, the Wayne's World scene, like, I'm not worthy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy. We're not worthy. That's like amazing. That. That's awesome. And especially if you loved them so much. Yeah. I like their music so much. Like, in my opinion, Freddie Mercury, like, such an amazing and talented voice wow yeah i mean they're he's awesome mm -hmm. okay uh favorite sports and favorite team from those sports Ooh. okay so i love sports and i've played almost every sport softball and gymnastics were my favorite to, well, and which transitioned into cheerleading so those were my favorite sports to play growing up but i played volleyball and basketball huh? soccer wasn't big where I grew up, but at the time, so love all sports. Now I don't watch a lot of sports. I mm. did watch baseball a lot when I was little, so I would rather play them than watch them. Mm. So I don't say I have a favorite team. I I follow whoever, whomever my family is following. So, like my, I'm from Louisiana, so my family follows the Saints and LSU, and then. You know, here being in Texas, if people follow the Cowboys or UT, I'm like, go team. But I can't mm -hmm. say that I lose sleep if anybody loses. But I love playing them. I mean, I, there was one time when I lived in L.A., I was playing on four teams, softball teams, a weekend. Because I don't know why. I finally had to retire and go, this is, <laughs> this uh -huh. is too hard. So I do love playing. And we, even, and we even have a basketball court behind our house. And oh. so I'll go like to just, well, I won't say chill out because it's active, but to take a break, I'll go shoot hoops. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it mm -hmm. sounds cooler than I really am because I'm not. <laughs> do you, do you, what position do you play in softball? If you, <laughs> yeah, pitcher, short and second. Pitcher. Wow. That's cool. Wow. But you are cool, like you know, so like you're trying to say, you're trying to say, you are cool, though, at least. <laughs> That's my husband. <laughs> okay. 
uh, favorite food and why is your favorite? Oh, Mexican food for sure. And it's because I like spicy food. I eat fresh jalapenos daily and could eat them with any meal. It's what people make fun of me for. It's kind of like, okay, what is Elise going to have with her jalapenos? Mm. And since my accent will creep in if I'm not focused, we say jalapenos and I will have people go, what? A jalapeno? You mean jalapeno? <laughs> but yeah, definitely Mexican. Is there a food you don't like? Like, uh, like you cilantro. Anything with I know that's like a kind of like a spice or a garnish, but anything with cilantro, which is okay. ironic because it's on so much Mexican food. But <laughs> I have to tell people I'm allergic to it, or they will garnish everything. At least in Texas, and when I was in California too, they want to put cilantro on it everything oh my god so don't give Elise cilantro okay <laughs> no cilantro okay uh, hopefully uh when things get back to normal sooner rather than later are there any projects you have in the works well ho hopefully i will so i haven't been doing on-camera work because of you know everything kind of cool. shut down and production is just now starting to pick up so i would love to get back to that as production starts back up i'm still doing anime adventures and so i will get back to okay. the world of <laughs> the world of conventions right now i'm doing zoom interviews and i have some ideas for that and and then, you know, a couple of people have contacted me for projects, but it's still in the beginning phases. So I am, you know, I, I hear actors say this, but I'm not at liberty to say, but, um, but hopefully I will just continue to work and um, stay busy. Yeah. Yeah. Stay, okay. Well, yeah. Okay. What advice would you give younger people or people in general? Uh, going like acting business like what advice would you get so yeah my yeah. advice to people who want to start acting which i think you can do at any age mm -hmm. is i always recommend taking classes because it's just mm -hmm. such a great place to start and right now there are people who you can take online hopefully soon there will be classes i mean there are some classes mm -hmm. open you know in person different parts of the country but you can take private, like I coach privately. You can take group classes online. There are plenty of people who, I know a lot of actors in Dallas at least, teach uh, group classes. There are places in LA and New York. So you can definitely find a class where you can take for voiceover or on camera, whatever it is you're interested in. And if you can't, if now is not a good time financially for you to take a class, I would say grab your phone, grab whatever app is on there, record yourself, whatever it is you want to do. If it's anime or commercial work or, or, or on camera, just film yourself and listen back or watch back because we are in a world where all of the auditions are done from home. Even right now, what... What you see right now is where I do my on-camera auditions if I get them. Um, and so you have to get used to directing yourself, either audibly or visually. And so it's just such good practice. And you, you hear other actors who are even established say that's where they started. They started just practicing and recording themselves. Gabe, Gabe Kunda has a great story about just recording himself when he was younger. And now he's got this amazing career and so many actors have that story so there is a way no matter what level of acting you are no matter what you can do financially there's a way to get started um and, and you can watch youtube videos as well but you just have to make sure you're watching somebody who is credible so that is my encouragement and then i would also say no matter where you are you can get started there there is hope and if you find it is hard work but if you find you're passionate about it and you back to my nerdiness of setting goals and action steps and taking small steps you can make it happen and find out if you like it or if you just you know if you want to do it as a career or if you want to have it as a hobby so yeah i would encourage you to take that step see if you like it 
I like that advice. Oh. <laughs> I like that clap. <laughs> okay, is there uh, anything you'd like to promote and shout out? Well, I would just say Anime Adventures, which is youtube.com slash anime adventures. I would love for you to check out the channel with some interviews and then you can follow me on social media at Elise Bowman, follow Anime Adventures at Adventures Anime. It's backwards. But I try to be very active on all of those places and respond. You know, I I don't always get to everyone. I read everything that comes through and then reply to as many people as possible. But we're doing a cool thing on Anime Advent adventures where people have given me ideas and so I've compiled them all this is where the accountant comes in I have compiled them all and still compiling the ideas and we'll try to execute those over time so that people's ideas get incorporated into the videos like who they want to see what questions they like to hear either for a specific person or just in general so a lot of fun things going on there yeah I'll link the uh, Instagram pages, the Facebook, I don't know if you have Facebook pages and Twitter yeah. pages, and all that, and the YouTube page. I got you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah, and I love what you're doing, by the way. I, I know I touched on that earlier, but you've got great interviews and you're just really bringing some cool stuff into the world. So keep on doing that. My goal is just to bring positivity. That's my goal. <laughs> well, bring positivity these COVID times. Yes, and you're doing such a good job, and you're right. Um, we're in tough times right now for many reasons, and I think what you're bringing is so great because people need that. We need some positive things and vibes going on in the world. Yeah. So thank you for what you're doing. Thank you. And big inspiration. Ms. Oh. Thank you. Thank you. No problem. Well, I'm, uh, I thank you all so much for watching. Thank you, Annalise, for being an awesome and amazing guest. Oh, thank you. Well, it was such a pleasure. No problem. Have a great day, everybody, and stay awesome. And stay awesome, Elise. Oh, well, you too. Stay awesome. And thank you for watching. <laughs>